So we are going to be talking today. Um, I want to share with you uh, some five principles that the Holy Spirit has given uh, given us. So before um, I do that, I just want to say a quick word of prayer for each and every one of you who is watching. Father, I thank you so much for all the amazing uh, single adults who are looking at this today. Lord God, I pray that this speaks to them. I pray that they will get something out of this today. I pray that it will bless their soul in a special way. In Jesus name. Amen. All right. So listen, we are going to take we are going to look at five amazing principles that we're going to glean from Genesis chapter 24. Okay. So Genesis chapter 24 is going to be where I'm going to give you five principles that I think every single person can glean from this chapter. This is a powerful chapter. Okay. And this was a chapter that ministered to me some years ago. Um, the, these five principles is not in the book, uh, seven things single should accomplish before marriage. These are, uh, other five principles that, that the Holy Spirit showed me that I really believe that if, again, if a person is, uh, widowed and they want to, um, get married again, if a person has, have been divorced or whatever, if a person has never been married, whatever the status you're in, if you are in any way, um, believing God to maybe meet someone amazing. These five principles, I really believe will be a blessing to you. And they are right there in the word of God. And that's what I love the most. All right. So I'm going to bring your attention to Genesis chapter 24. And before I put the scriptures on the, on the screen, I just want to share with you that a little background of what's taking place in this. So if you have your Bibles, um, you can open it. I am going to put scriptures up so you can visually see it. But I want you to get a little background of what's happening here. This is the story where um, Abraham uh, sends his servant to go find a wife for his son. OK, now there's five key things that we can find in this story that I really believe that could be a blessing to us. So let's let's give me a, let me give you a little background. So in the chapter previous to this one, Abraham buries his wife, um, Sarai. OK, now when he buries her, he is in a land called Canaan. He is there because he buried his wife there. OK, so he's pretty much in this land. The people is really not a um, 100 percent. The people who's living in that land is not a 100 percent serving the God that Abraham is serving. So now you can understand the context of what we are going to read in Genesis chapter 24. So please look at the screen with me as I pop up these scriptures for you. So this right here is going to be uh, Genesis chapter uh, 24 verse three, it says, and I will make the swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites. So you see, he said of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. So he's dwelling there because again, he buried his wife there. Look at verse four, but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son. All right. So now we see here that the first thing he does is he tells the servant. The first principle is he was very clear on where his son should not marry. Very clear on who you should not marry. All right. So that's principle number one, because I think a lot of times with, uh, we tend to forget that the Bible is really filled with many principles that gives us certain commandments. And I think for definitely for single adults who are believers of Jesus Christ, we tend to try to move away from the word of God to do our own thing. All of us has been guilty of doing that. And so here, what we see here is principle number one was, Abraham tells his servant, listen, I'm going to give you clarity on where this uh, wife for my son should not come from. So this is a clarity of the type of people you should not be even looking at. All right. So now the scripture is very clear. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. All right. So we are living in a day where a lot of people are looking at people. That person don't have no relationship with God. That person can clearly serve another God. And most people, because of their need to want to get in a relationship, will sacrifice their uh, this principle just so they can have a mate. And I always want to tell people this. I mean, you will do better staying by yourself than to force yourself to get married with someone who don't serve the same God you serve going in the same directions you serve. And I think many people have made that mistake. Oh, well, 
I'm going to get him. I'm going to marry him. And then I'm going to bring him to church with me <laughs> or I'm going to marry him. And then I'm going to uh, make him pray or I'm going to marry her. And I'm going to and I'm going to believe God that he's going to change her heart. Now, that is OK. I mean, it's, it's nothing wrong um, with with wanting to lead a person into Christ if you are already married to an unbeliever. But this is a person who's going in fresh, clean slate and you not married and you say, well, listen, um, you know, the, the, the choices are slim out there, Lord. <laughs> there ain't many to choose from. So, uh, let me, let me go and, um, snatch up one of these ones. And I know that they curse and they, 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 they ain't, they ain't even thinking about you. But Lord, I believe that I can go in and do a little something. You know, we call that missionary date. <laughs> so you're, you're on a mission to change them for Christ. All right. So, I mean, that kind of the missionary date, you don't want to do. You want to give them, you want to, Allow yourself to be very clear with the word of God and say, okay, the Lord says, listen, be not unequally yoked. Yoked mean, it doesn't mean that you cannot engage with unbelievers. It doesn't mean that you can be friends with unbelievers. It means yoked. That means when you're in covenants, lifelong long commitments, that's what it's really meaning. So if marriage is definitely one of those things. So it's clear that the first thing he did was he showed them what type of person or the kind of people that he do not want his son to marry. So principle number one is he was very, is you have to be very clear on the ones that's off the table. 